Hi, my name is Jamie and welcome to my desk. So today I'm gonna to be talking about five key differences between American and Korean dating culture. Things that I noticed when I first started dating my now fiance, Jaewon. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna even beat around the bush. Let's go ahead and get started. Number one is how long it takes to become an official couple. I feel like in America, you can be in a talking phase with someone for like months on end. Um, just asking yourself, are we boyfriend, girlfriend? Are we just friends? Are we just talking? Um, and yeah, that could go on for like months. I know people who have like broken up with people who have just been in the talking phase and they weren't even like officially a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And they're like, yeah, we kind of broke up, but not really because we were never really a thing. That is not really happening in South Korea. It's more popular to kind of jump into a relationship in South Korea. Um, I've heard that a lot of girls follow this three date rule where if the guy hasn't asked you to be his girlfriend after three dates, he's pretty much not interested. So after I met Jiwon and we went on two dates, he asked me to be his girlfriend and I was like in shock. I thought it was way too fast because I was more used to the American way of doing things, taking things slow, talking, like, you know, just like feeling it out a little bit before you got serious with someone. Um, so I was really taken off guard when he um, asked me after two dates. Number two is couple rings. Couple rings are huge in South Korea. Um, after you've been dating someone for like a couple of months, you could get a couple ring with somebody and they're just like matching rings. Honestly, when I first saw them, I thought they were just engagement rings or wedding rings. Um, they almost look identical, to be honest, um, to an engagement ring or a wedding ring in Korea. Um, yeah, after a few months, a um, couple might go pick out some couple rings with each other and it's kind of like the equivalent of an American promise ring I feel like there's more of like a heavy weight. This is probably my own perspective But I feel like a heavier weight when I think of the word promise ring maybe because the word promise is inside of it um, Either way, I think it's super cute um, Jaywon asked if I wanted to get couple rings, but I just said we were already planning and talking about getting engaged soon So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna wait for the engagement ring <laughs> Number three is matching outfits. Matching outfits are super popular in South Korea and I feel like it's, I don't know, maybe considered a little cheesy in America. Some people think it's super cute and other people think it's a little bit too much. Um, but in South Korea, it's super normal for couples to match everything, their shoes, their shirts, their pants, their whole outfits, even their hair. Like some couples dye their hair the same color. Um, you won't really see that in America too often. Um, yeah, I honestly think it's one of the cure aspects of Korean dating culture, but that's just me. Number four is meeting your boyfriend or your girlfriend's parents for the first time. So I learned from Jaywon that you don't really introduce your boyfriend or girlfriend to your parents um, unless you're like dead solid, like that person is the one and you're very serious with that person and then you introduce them to your parents. Whereas in America, every family is different, I know that, but um, I feel like from my experiences, it's normal for like your, high school boyfriend or girlfriend to meet your um, parents or like maybe someone you've been dating for like a year or something like that and you would just invite them to dinner one night or like Thanksgiving if you're like, you know, kind of serious with them. But um, from what Jaywon has told me, you don't really introduce, you know, your boyfriend or girlfriend to your Korean parents unless it's like, this person is the one. Which makes it more nerve wracking if you are dating someone from Korea and you do have to meet their parents, there's more of like a heavy weight to it and it's uh, terrifying. Number five is texting. So there's actually two aspects to this. In South Korea, couples text way more than in America. Okay, I'm generalizing everybody, but I'm gonna say for the most part, at least from my experiences and I know from my friends and other people I know, it seems like uh, South Korean couples will be texting all day long, like back and forth, um, like asking each other how their day was, did you eat, sending each other cute emojis, videos to watch or pictures or whatnot. And in America, a lot of American couples don't really text all day long. Um, I think maybe it's uh, normal to like send a good morning text or like a good night text or things like this, but um, there's definitely not like conversation going on all day long. And this is what I was used to when um, I first met Jaywon and then he was texting me like all the time and I was like really taken back by it. Um, but then I got used to texting and I honestly really enjoy texting a lot now, but um, there definitely was like a learning curve. 
The second aspect to texting is how many emojis that I was using when I first started texting him. I noticed that um, Jaywan was using a lot of emojis when he was texting and when I went through like my own messages to compare, like I rarely used emojis. Maybe like a crying laughing emoji or like, I don't know, like a smiley face sometimes but like not as much as he was using. And I later ended up joining Kakao Talk. Um, if you know what that is, it's a really popular like app that a lot of Koreans use to communicate. And um, yeah, there are some really cute emoticons on there and it's really popular to like buy these super cute emoticons and then send them to your friends on their birthday because they're like a buck 99. They're super cheap and they're really cute. Um, yeah, I've collected a lot over the years and I've really gotten used to using emoticons now and emojis in my texting and it kind of just make it, it makes your text seem a little bit warmer than if you just didn't use any kind of emojis at all. Okay, that was my five differences between American and Korean culture dating edition. If you liked anything in this video, um, please like and comment and subscribe. Thanks, bye. Thank <laughs> you.